I'm going to be talking about today, today about um, Ayn Rand. It's this lady here, okay? And uh, some people say that, or confuse her with me. They say that she said thing the same thing I say in different words, or that I'm saying stuff that she said in different words. And so um, we got a problem because uh, I claim I say absolutely nothing. <laughs> similar, even similar to Ayn Rand. <laughs> and so if people confuse me with Ayn Rand or believe that I'm saying the same thing in different words or some other way, we got a big problem. We got a big problem because I'm not getting my message across of how I'm different than her. In fact, I think she's just the same as all other philosophers. I don't see any difference between Plato and her. I don't see any the difference between anyone from Plato all the way to Sartre and beyond uh, with her. They, they were all the same. They all said the same thing. And I'm not only going to include philosophers, I'll include physicists or so-called physicists, people who supposedly were known as mathematical physicists or who um, attempted to lay the foundations of so-called physics. I don't, know, I don't agree with any of those. And um, so that's one thing we, we have to look at. S something is wrong if people are confusing me with any, other, any philosopher or physicist from uh, 2,500 years ago all the way to the end of the 20th century. You know, this stuff is totally different. We have a new paradigm. It's a paradigm shift that occurred. We call it rational science. And until you really get it deep inside it and understand you know, some of the nuances, nuanced uh, differences. Um, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Okay. So that's what this channel is about. We're trying to make sure you get the message of how this is different than anything that has happened until today. One of the big problems that we have with uh, Ayn Rand is there's a lot of people who are fans of hers. And uh, they are, uh, okay, I'll get to, by the way, uh, hold your questions, uh, or you can make the questions, but I'm going to try to answer them at the end, okay? I'm going to try to address as many as I can. And today, really, what I want to do, I wanted to get into Ayn Rand specifically, uh, into some of her definitions. I won't be able to get there. I don't think so, because we got, we got to take a step back, <laughs> We got to go back one step and find out what philosophy is about. Once we determine what philosophy is about from the rational science point of view, uh, we find out that she was not even a philosopher. Okay, none of these people qualified as a philosopher uh, or as a physicist. Okay, and that's the issue. We got something different on the on the on the books right now, and you don't have to agree with it. You just have to understand how it's different. Okay, that's that's the point of this channel. So uh, instead of throwing rotten eggs at my <laughs> at my face, what you should try to do is understand and reach your own conclusions. That's the point. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, w one of the problems I come across with Ayn Rand, and I've had this over the years. Okay, is that. Uh, she has a lot of fans out there, and uh, these fans, uh, it, it has become a religion to them, okay? Uh, you know, she's a heroine, she, a heroine in both senses of the word. She's, she's like a hero, and she's also like a drug, okay? So it's, uh, Ayn Rand is a heroine in every sense of the word, and um, I've been there and done that. Not with Ayn Rand. I was a communist for at least 20 years of my life until I got away from that. It took a long uh, process, mental process to, you know, swim out of there, to rise to the uh, surface. Uh, I was an atheist for a little longer than that. Um, it took analysis of science, of what, I, what is known as rational science, uh, to come out of that one. Uh, I was a follower of Carl Sagan for many years. I uh, loved him as a teacher. Obviously, he was a great teacher. He was a, a good presenter. And that's part of the hypnotism that got me. The fact that he was, oh, good, look, he's talking science, and look how well he does it, and so on. 
and it wasn't until I started looking at what what he was actually saying, you know, the meat, the substance rather than the form, that, you know, today I dismiss Sagan as <laughs> absolute nonsense. And so, no, we, we have to, so, so I understand where a lot of these people are coming from. You know, they, they get stuck on a person and then they say, oh, I'm going to follow this person because I like everything she says. And you don't see the problems until someone points a contrast and you can compare. And that's when your, your mind starts evolving because now you're comparing your thinking. You're saying, oh, hold it. What about this? And what about that? And that's all I'm trying to get out to you today. So before you, again, before you throw rotten eggs at me, uh, first keep in mind I've got jet lag. <laughs> That's an excuse. And uh, and second, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I I just want to present a contrast for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, one uh, good word uh, comes from Mr. Al Hazan Al Hazan, right? And that's something many of you should keep in mind. Who follow a religion and idol a celebrity, okay? And it says, the seeker of truth is not one who studies the writings of the ancients and following his natural disposition, right? We all have natural biases and so on, prejudices, puts his trust in them, but rather the one who suspects his faith in them and questions what he gathers from them. The one who submits to argument and demonstration, well, I don't know about demonstration, and not the sayings of human beings whose nature is fraught with all kinds of imperfection and deficiency. Thus, the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, and obviously it's not about the truth, but uh, we get the sense, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads. That's the critical point. Make yourself an enemy of all that you hear, you see, you read. Make yourself an, an instant enemy. If you like it, make yourself an enemy of it. That's the best way to approach the problem. If you can put yourself on the other side, that's, that's the uh, rational way of doing it. Criticize yourself, essentially. Okay, Check your, your understanding, etc. And by applying his mind to the core and margins of its content, attack it from every side. You have to attack your beliefs. Okay? He should also suspect himself okay? as he performs his critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Okay? 10th century, 11th century. Okay? 